You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get your last word. Welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast, part of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATV. This is September the 17th, 2018, and with you today is myself, Carl, and the always wonderful Joel. What up? It is a, uh, what, two, three weeks left until hockey, and we Start finally... the small talk. Let's get to finally it. Finally got news. We, we don't have time for this. Yeah, we were... Jeez. We were ta- had all kinds of plans for this week, and the hockey news changed all of those yeah you almost got like we almost became permanently the blank line (laughs) it's true yeah just mike had 17 weird questions we were just gonna quickly jump into all of them yeah but we're here we are talking about there was a trade this week i don't know if you heard about the trade that happened this week um we'll get into that someone quit their job this week we'll talk about that uh someone got suspended and uh, some people signed some contracts. In a nutshell, that's what we have in store for you today. Oh, it's magical. Before we get into any of that, we'll remind everyone about the fine folks at ATB who support all kinds of hockey in you and around your community. Uh, one thing that I've discovered in the past week or so, uh, they support uh, camps. So if you're a kid looking to get into hockey, you're wanting to get better. If you're a coach and you want to get better, ATB supports all those through the whl so if you head to uh just head to the google machine and search whl camps atb you'll be able to find it there um lots of good things happening with our fine folks at atb joel let's start with the trade eric carlson to the san jose sharks first thoughts are you surprised after all we've been through this season that he actually got traded no so you fully expected I did. Yeah? You didn't expect him? I did not think that they would actually manage to pull a trade off with what, like a week before camp to open? Well, didn't, like, they kind of all, everyone was talking last week, like it, like Friday was kind of the deadline. And so, I don't know, I'm not surprised. I The only thing that I'm surprised about, like the whole time he was still like, I don't want to leave Ottawa. Like for some reason his preference was still to stay in Ottawa, which I didn't understand ever. Well, and like was still involved in the community as the, you know, as that date neared, as camp neared, uh, you know, was at his uh, organization's events and things like that. So certainly was still involved. But it wasn't like he needed to save face. Like he could be like, I want out of here as soon as possible. And he still wouldn't have been hated. Very true. Yeah. Because like. Sends. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he is not the one getting any of the blame for what's happened in Ottawa. No one's like Eric. You should have should have stayed. It's interesting. Do you think? I'm trying to think of the last time, and it might have been like way sooner. Like maybe it was. Like it's probably like I think it's it was the Red Wings. I can't think of another team where the best player on the team was a defenseman. That's one. The Stanley Cup. That's won the Stanley Cup. Yeah, I would. I'd say going back to the Lidstrom days. That's what I'm thinking. And even then, I'm trying to think of like because he would have been. I don't, I'm trying to remember. Was he in his peak when they were winning their Stanley Cups? And like, because like the Iserman Fedorov Cup years, would he have been the best player? Well, yeah, that's the. I think by the end of their runs, I think he would have been the best player on some of those squads. So, but I'm trying to think of, like, I can't think of, I don't think Doughty was the best team, like, the best player on that team when the Kings were winning. Was he? Yeah, he would have been in the running, but yeah, I don't think. It's Kopitar, probably. Yeah. So, that's the one interesting thing that I'm, like... Can so like because like Carlson, he's probably the best player. Like, how many teams would he not be the best player on? Like three. Like in in the NHL, I'm trying to think. Like who? Like okay. Like basically, I'm just saying. Like 
where where do you put him on the list of best players in the NHL? Yeah, he's he's up, I I put him as the best defenseman in the league. Like right. if I'm if I'm making a trade right now for a defenseman, which I've seen been argued by people and they're wrong. I um know. yeah. The yeah, I would say if you were to have him like I would rather have I'd put him in the top 5 at least. But he's the best player on San Jose. He's now the best. Pl- San Jose just traded a smattering of players for what is now their best player. A ridiculous embarrassment of not riches to get Eric Carlson. Yeah. So the pieces that they gave him. Let, let's uh, Chris Tierney. Okay. Yeah. I'm. Do we? I don't know if we need to go through it. Like this is like if you don't know that this was. A, like they basically have up nothing. There's just one first round pick. That's like probably the only thing of real value. Yeah, they gave up a first. Round. They did not give up their best prospect in Ryan Merkley, no. which is ridiculous. Like if you're trading for another team's best player to become your best player, and you don't have to give up your best prospect, to me that's a great sign that you really got screwed. Yeah, I. It's crazy how little they gave up, and like, and then. <laughs> the other thing that's hilarious is that like they just went back to the well and were like, "Hey, like we sh- we know that the sharks pulled one over on us." On the, shark, the sharks really did us over about a month ago. But yeah, uh, we'll still trade with them. Yeah, and and but they did at the very least put that little contingency in so that they couldn't. He couldn't end up back in the East because that's still the thing that the Senators care a lot about. True, which is bizarre. And it's the still thing- just as dumb, if not worse, because Carlson, like after this year, who knows what he's gonna be, uh, where he's gonna be. My, if I had to guess, I like my guess is I think he's gonna be in San Jose long term. I would not be surprised because yeah. they're a team that can sign him. They have the money in the space to sign a guy like Carlson long term. And, like, I guess it all depends on this year, I guess, but they can also give them the extra year, right? So, I don't know. I think, like, the winner of this deal is probably the Sharks, and then Carlson, and then, I don't know who else wins this. Probably the, it's probably like, it's probably like the Sharks, Carlson, the Avalanche. Yeah, and then, for sure. Then the rest of the league. That's no, not the in the Pacific the, Division. I was going to say, like, the rest of the league that's in, like, the rest of the East, then the West, and then the Senators. Like, that's the order of who won this. Trade. Yeah. Because now, because, like, you're not, like, Vegas probably is, like, the second. Because, like, they pro- they're probably not super thrilled about this. Yeah, they're not they're not looking forward to having to face Eric Carl as, you know, no one else in that division should be when they suddenly have a, you know, your top two defensemen, Brent Burns and Eric Carlson. That's good. That's ridiculous. That's when you That's when, silly. When you have two of the top top 5 defensemen in the league. Yeah, when you have them and I, you know, we obviously haven't uh seen exactly how they're going to implement them, but the fact that you can put those two on the power play together like you can't that's just ridiculous <laughs> like you probably shouldn't do that you should probably, you should split, probably them split them up yeah which is probably like i've seen a lot of uh of lassic burns and then carlson and that's the other crazy thing is like it's not even like their third best defenseman is probably the best defenseman on a lot of teams yeah they're third they're third best yeah it's it's pretty pretty ridiculous what's happening out in san, uh, san jose do you like to me, they jump to the favors to win that division, but a lot of people are they're now saying like San Jose favor for the cup, and I'm not sure I go that far. I'm also not sure who I have as my cup favor right now, but like San Jose has all the pieces. There's nothing there that says like you have a gaping hole. My cup favorite is still Tampa. Like, that seems just really good. Yeah, I just don't think, but. I don't know. Like, who's better than them in the West? Like, no one's better than them in that division, for sure. Like, hands down. But that, I don't think anyone's better than them in the West. I think they're, for sure, the West favorites. And I would probably put them top three, for sure, if not top two. I still think Tampa's better. Tampa's just... 
it's just a really good team. Yeah, and I well, and if you look at the fact of that, they're you know they won't face a good team from the Central till the West Final. I think in a, a series like that, anything can happen. So, um, yeah, I would I'd probably put them right up there, uh, one or two in the West. So, where would you put them overall, though? Oh, I you know Tampa's up there, Nashville, Winnipeg, San Jose. I don't think Washington's in that top collective. Part of me wants to put the Leafs in that top collective, and I, I don't know how you feel about that. Um, so, I, what? That's top five, and if I'm going to rank that five, probably second or third. See, I think, I think Tampa is in probably a tier of their own in the league as far as like cup favorites. Like I just don't think anyone's like I just don't think anyone's as complete a team as they are. Like they don't have a general manager really. <laughs> well that is I'm just talking this this upcoming year. If they made zero moves right now, they're a cup favorite. Okay, fair. So I'm just talking about like this year. Right. And so I think Tampa's in a tier of their own and then I think I think San Jose is probably in another tier of their own. You've got a lot of tiers. And then I would say whatever your collection of Nashville, Winnipeg, Toronto, and then Washington until they prove otherwise. Right. Because I don't, I always think it's weird. Like, unless there's like a major dismantling of a team, the previous cup winner, if they're basically going in with the same team that just, which they are. Like you can't, they lost a backup goalie. You can't not put them as a cup favorite. Like, yeah. So like I would say those that handful of teams is in the next realm. But like again, you have I just I don't know what Nashville is anymore. Winnipeg and Toronto have way too much to prove. Like I just don't like and like the, th- the problem with Winnipeg is that the teams around them are getting better. Like, and they didn't do a whole lot to get better. Yeah, the central central teams did a lot, so. So, and then, so yeah, I don't know. It's San Jose, like, they're a good team. They got a lot of good players, so they they should be there. They should have no problem making it to the Western Finals. Well, and, and, and on the, you know, just some, touch on something that you mentioned, uh, Carlson Stain, I think like San Jose is where I would suspect he would stay. And I know like you can look and say they re signed Evander Kane last year, mm-hmm. managed to convince him to stick around. But at the same time, you've got Joe Thornton who continually signs contracts. He's going to be 40 next year. $5 million for him. If he actually retires, Eric Carlson's currently sitting at six and a half. If you take Thornton's five, give it to Carlson, 11 and a half. Sounds like a pretty reasonable number on what he's going to sign for. Right. And so, so like, they don't even need to, like, and they're not a cap team. So. Well, they're pretty up there right now. They? They're oh, okay. within two million of the cap as it stands. Just kidding. They are a cap team. They never used to be a cap team, did when, they? When you add Eric Carlson to that team. I guess that's true. They suddenly become a cap team. So. But at the, like, right? So you've got him. Pavelski's going to get a contract. So you have to save some money from him. But like, Pavelski, Carlson, and you take out Joe Thornton, you're doing pretty well there. But they and they have guys that they can move. Like I, I'm sure they could probably like Vlasic's contract. I don't think is overly great, but it's not terrible. It's probably like someone would probably give you something of value for it. Yeah, you would get something pretty good out of that. So 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 it's not. So like they're not in a terrible situation cap wise. They will be. It is going to be difficult. The interesting thing about Pavelski is like. He's going to get a new contract, but he's 34. Like, I just don't see. Like, is it he, right now? He's got six up, up. If you set that as the over under. My guess is probably over, but, but three short. Years. Exactly. Yeah. It's going to be like, that. like, my guess is seven and a half. Yeah. Seven and a half over three, eight over three. Either, like, I can tell you, I can tell you. From uh, past history, I'm not going to like the new Pavelski deal. <laughs> right, like it's gonna be, it's gonna be a deal that, like, 
You're not gonna love it as long, but if they can keep it to the three ish years, if they can yep. keep it to the three, like if they can keep it three or less, it's not gonna be terrible, right? Well, and the, and so yeah, Sharks primed to bring back Eric Carlson. I I would say that that's probably the leader in the clubhouse. Let's let's move to to Tampa. Your favorite to win the Stanley Cup, Steve Eiserman this week resigned as the general manager there with no real statement on what he's doing. He's just said, you know, he's, he, he apparently still has a role with the team as an advisor, which is what you do with a general manager. Who's not your general manager. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, the first thought is Ken Holland on his way out in Detroit and Steve Eiserman suddenly available. Is that what you suspect? A hundred percent. So let me just say one thing. Okay. First, we don't really know why he did this. He did not give any reasons. He didn't give any reasons. So, obviously, if it's like personal, family related, completely understandable. But from a very strictly hockey perspective, could not be happier. (laughs) (laughs) Fair. Like, I I get, like, not knowing why... Or whatever, not like there could be awful things going on in his life, and we don't want to, and I don't want to be like happy about that, but we don't know. Assuming that's not the case. And just from a strictly hockey perspective, very, very excited for the direction the Tampa Bay Lightning are taking. Because, <laughs> like, it, you are going to get a worse GM. Yeah. Well, last week, what? I, I, Clocked him in at number two. Yeah, you're gonna get a worse GM. You just yeah. are. You you might get a good GM. I'm hoping you don't. I'm hoping Tampa gets a bad GM. Yeah. Um. And yes, I assume he goes to Detroit, unless there's a reason why he stepped down because he just doesn't have like right his if, health, family doesn't want to. Yeah. But if he, if he was just like I've done everything I can, which I. I do have to think there's something there. Because, like, why now? Right. Because, like, you'd think, like, whoa, like, he's got the chance to win. So, I think Tampa should be happy that uh, he got as many contracts done as possible. Mm -hmm. Bet you wish he had made, like, well, I guess Sergachev, Sergachev, how do you say that guy's name? Yep. Whatever, one of those two. You nailed it. Um... He he's not available for a contract extension, so you couldn't do it. Couldn't do it with him. Neither is Vasilevsky. So you just wish you wish you could have stuck around one more year, gotten those two contracts figured out. Because apparently Eiserman's magic and can sign guys to way undervalued deals. Right. But now they're gonna like. You gotta think that the agents of those guys are pretty happy. For sure. Um, before. Now, again, you, you talk about the salary cap stuff. Uh, Julian Brisebois, who is coming in as their new GM, was the one in charge of salary cap for this team. So he was just like, you know how we always say that you should just have a guy whose jo- job is to look at the salary That's, cap? That was the guy? They had this guy. But the difference, there's, there's a difference here, though. He was the guy that said, hey, Steve, we need this guy to sign for this much. And then Steve convinced the guy to sign for that. Or like, hey, we need this guy gone. Like, you need to move Filipula out of town. Right. Got to do it. So that's, so that there is, like, so yeah, he might, he might have all the numbers figured out, but is he the, can he be the guy that convinces agents and players to take less or to convince GMs to take guys? Like, maybe. You might see, so like, so yeah, I don't know if that's going to be helpful. Like, I think, like, it felt like Eiserman was the guy that was really taking, like, he was the reason that guys were signing. Yeah. Well, in, you know, he's been in the organization a while, so he's he's not unknown. Uh, we'll see, obviously, what comes of it. Um, but it would be, it'll be very difficult for him to be able to match what Steve Eiserman has done there. Um, stick with Detroit. Uh, Henrik Zetterberg, retired. Yeah, there's 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 people on your lawn, Joel. I don't know who these people are. I don't know who those people are either. Um, they might. There, I think there's also a bunny rabbit on your lawn. So I believe that's oh, what's happening. All those rabbits on my lawn. Now. This is the first time we've ever recorded at Joel's kitchen table, and turns out we should have shut the curtains. 
we still could shut the curtains. It's true. We're in the middle of a show, though. Um, if you want to shut the curtains, I'll I'll explain. Henrik Zetterberg retired. Uh, does not appear to be on his way to the Phoenix Coyotes yet. Um, <laughs> but you never know when that's going to happen. They will be putting him on long term IR. And uh, and you you made a, a signal when I said retired. You you're not buying that. His back might be really bad. I'm sure his back is very bad. You think so? I think his back is bad enough that he can does not wish to play hockey any longer. He hasn't missed a game in the last three years. Like so, you sure? Like, is it so bad that he can't play hockey anymore? Because that's what everyone. That's what people are saying. Is it so bad that he can't? Yes. Doubt it. There's no way because. This is and like th- this is the Hosa clause. He, he hasn't missed a game in three years, and now magically he can't play anymore. Oh, he's also making much less money now. Like, right, shockingly. I I'm I am sure. I am sure it his back and his entire body is sore from playing hockey all of his life. From playing all the games, all the years. But. Don't kid yourself when when they're saying I he is physically unable to play anymore. I don't buy it in the slightest because why has he not missed a game in the last three years? Then right, what suddenly got so bad that and and again, it's probably bad. It's probably worse pain than either of us experience in our backs. Fair. However, he makes half the money he would have made last year. Yeah, and I. If he had just been like, and he can't do this because this is probably like called this is a cap sort of convention, but they don't need cap space, do they? Does this is this team still they're, that bad? And they're they're that bad in the cap. Why yeah. are they so bad? Like they're not even a good team. <laughs> Accurate. Like <laughs> that's so, partially part of the problem. Okay. Why doesn't he just retire then? Because if so he you, if he says he he can't play, he still gets paid to yeah. not show up. Because he's still going to get, in over the next three years, he's going to get $5.35 million. And they're happy to do that because they need the cap space. They get they get the cap space. They get to shove him on the IR. They don't have to pay him like a third of what he's actually the cap hit for. Because you never see this on a team. Yeah, because like, so like basically, like, so like, I just, I just don't get it. Because like, because Hosa, so like the difference between him and Hosa, the reason why Hosa hasn't actually officially retired is because it would ruin their cap, I think, right? Right, and the, it would it would ruin the Red Wings, but they just don't need it as much, right? In, right. Into the next few years, the Red Wings, right now they would be in a, up a creek. But Hosa, Hosa would have just retired, but the the like Chicago probably told him, we don't want you to. Because right. it, because it actually well, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure the Red Wings said the exact same thing. Like, look, we're gonna have to pay you like five and a half million dollars to one of your greatest players of the last generation. We're fine with that, right? Yeah, I just don't know how. I just don't like it. Just it just it's so weird. It's so weird. Like, because like it's not because like he again. Yeah, he's probably like he's. He is still capable of playing hockey. He just doesn't want to. Right. It, the it, but he also can't retire. I just like it's just such a confusing. It's just so weird because he's like he's like he, it, the press conference was like he was retiring. Like, do you remember the press conference for Prince Fielder? Yes. So he was told you're not allowed to play sports anymore. Yeah, and he cried. And he and so like he. He wasn't sitting there saying, well, like, I can, but the, it's just, like, how much money I make versus how much, like... It's no was, longer worth it. Yeah, like, he wasn't balancing this. He was, like, he actually had someone come and say, you can't play hockey anymore. Right. And so, that is not this. And so, that's why I'm, like, I don't know. It just feels weird. And I know, like, like Red Wings fans are just, like, this is the greatest guy ever. And, like, no one is asking the question, like... 
okay, wait a second. Like, what? Like, there's something not quite right here. Yeah. It's, and like, cause like, and again, like, I don't get the Hosa thing. Like, cause didn't Hosa, like, he became allergic to his equipment? Uh, Marion Hosa was allergic to his equipment, yes. I don't, like, I don't understand that. But, like, if he was legitimately allergic to his equipment and, like, had a doctor say, like, if you put hockey gloves on, you're going to have problems. Like, that's that's the same kind of thing. You're being, you're being told you can't do this anymore. I don't get the, like, I get that the, that the Red Wings are and Zetterberg are saying this. I just don't. What happened in the offseason when he wasn't playing hockey that all of a sudden he can't play anymore? Right. Yeah. And it, again, is he hurt? Yes. Is he hurt so bad that he could not make a comeback probably not we're gonna, i'm gonna be this is not gonna go well oh red wings fans red wings fans are not gonna be happy we, with we, we i would say red wings fans are like the red wings are probably one of like the teams that we like hire at least people that interact with us yeah there's a lot of red wings fans that listen to this show well there was they've now turned it off shout out to mike Layborn who writes on the website for us his stuff is awesome <laughs> you should check that out uh ah uh, Friend of the show? No, he's more than a friend. He's like family of the show. Yeah, Nick. Or Mike. I was talking about Mike. Mike, Nick's, Nick, Nick's, Nick's friend of the show. Nick's a good good friend of the show over at Wings Nation. If you want some, uh, I don't, I haven't seen any Wings Nation articles about nah, how. he did. Uh, well, about the uh, the injuries? Well, about, no, I'm not about the injuries. I saw him write, I, he's been writing Red Wings stuff recently though. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mean, uh, probably not, there's probably not a lot of that take that we just had on wings nation i appreciate that you join me in that take well because like, you, you're because you're right it's that's what's good about it yeah um is he a hall of famer let's go there no i don't think so either he's very good but they'll retire his jersey probably right oh yeah yeah the old 40s heading up there i don't know okay wait i let me see if you're if you're checking if Wings Nation has anything about him no i'm checking to see if he's a hall of famer or not just like based off of numbers he might be. Where, where, where is he sitting at? All-time numbers. Six, 960 points, 337 goals. How many Stanley Cups? Probably a couple, right? Yeah. Here's uh, one Conn Smythe. That's pretty good. When did they win the Cup? 07, 08. I don't know when else. They, he was 05. He started playing in 02. Oh, he's got multiple Cups. He has, he has one Stanley Cup. That's it. 2008. So he must have joined... He must have started. He must have joined them just after they won. Because like, didn't yeah. they, how many cups did they win? They've won at least like three, right? In the last twenty years. E- mm, no, probably e- they won. I yeah, at least three. Two thousand ten, it would be twenty years, but <laughs> <laughs> right it, during like the last 30 from the years. start of like the Iserman era to now. Yeah, they yeah, have three cups. Oh, I want to say three is the number. I don't know. I believe that there was. Two during the uh, the Avalanche rivalry era, and then the one against Pittsburgh. Right, and that would be his cup. Yeah, it's that's his cup. Uh, oh, he like just missed one. Two thousand two. Yeah, they won, and he started playing in the o two o three. So four, four during that run. Ninety seven, ninety eight, and two thousand two. There you go. Well, so do not you- a Hall of Famer. Those are good. Certainly, like a Conn Smythe, a Stanley Cup, are are big ticket items that look good for the the Hall of Fame resume. If you were to slot those all time numbers, all time uh, stats, probably like okay, let's look at this. This is the you know the conversation we had earlier this off season. Jerome McGinley. We we agreed, Hall of Famer. Am I am I misremembering this? No. Okay, Jerome McGinley, career stats, 1,678 games, 1,360 points. Yeah, that's a lot more points. It's a lot more. Yeah, you're probably right. You are probably right, as you always are. Oh, thanks. The always right Carl, that's your new nickname. The always right, I can I can handle that. Uh, let's go to some contracts were signed this week. Uh, let's start in Dallas. Tyler Sagan, eight years, nine point eight five million per to stay with the Dallas Stars. I personally like this is a big number, right? You're clocking in just under ten 
but a number that's worth it. Tyler Sagan has been, you know, to me, I if I had to pick a guy on that team, I'd rather him over Jamie Ben. Not to say anything bad about Ben, but T- Tyler Sagan, 33, 26, 40 goals, under $10 million. And you, Dal- or Dallas is one of those ones, like much like Tampa, where you can uh, you can convince them to take less money because of income tax. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. I don't. I don't know how up you are on uh, Texas tax law, but no. that's one of those things. <laughs> um. That's one of those weird things that you have to be aware of as a a hockey puck. State tax laws. Right. Who knew? Who knew that was a thing that we were going to have to learn about? It's true. Um. And so you know the. Under ten million is going to get him further, and if you look at similar numbers that have come out over the last year, you know obviously the biggest comparable, and it, he's a bit, you know, uh, he's a he's a couple years younger, but not that much younger. Um, you know, he came in under the seven by eleven for Tavares, mm-hmm. and that's you know one year younger for those contracts are going to end at the same time, but you're paying Sagan less, and I'm not sure which one of them. I know Leafs fans. Love them some John Tavares. But, like, it's comparable which of those two. And if you're going to offer me one at less money, that's the one I'm going to take. Yeah, probably. Tavares has that name appeal that Sagan doesn't. Like, one of the things I was going to say is, like, Sagan has quietly become, like, like he's, like, one of the underrated best players in the league. Like, I don't hear anyone going out and saying, like, Tyler Sagan, top, like, conversation is maybe, like, top five top 10 player i don't think he's i don't think he's there but like he's definitely in the conversation i feel like if tyler sagan had not signed a contract and john Tavares had have not signed in toronto the same tyler's or john Tavares hype we saw this season would have just moved in the same way it moved from stamkos to Tavares. it would have moved to tyler sagan and the hype train would have been ridiculous i don't think so I think it would have been smaller than Stamkos and Tavares. Those names are bigger than than Sagan. Do you do you think it's because of his location, the fact that he's more west? Do you think it's because of the style of play? Do you think it's the fact that like he just wasn't as like he he started slow, Boston totally screwed it up. Like I don't know what like he just because like if he if he had stayed in Boston, we wouldn't be having this conversation because he wasn't turning into the star that he is now. Like they were, I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was environment or if it's just Boston's a terrible place. Uh, it's probably a lot of both of those. Yeah, things. A little A, little B. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. I just don't think like he's just he's just not he just doesn't have the name appeal that like the other stars in the leagues have i just don't like which I'm is not... which is great because like i i'm not disagreeing with you like that is very true but the fact that he scored 30 plus in four out of the last five years right i'm not saying it about his game like he's not as good as those other players i'm just saying for whatever reason he it's just it's quieter than the other players yeah and I, you know part of that is going to be the fact that like there's not a lot of playoff hockey on his resume, right? Only two seasons in Dallas in the playoffs. How many did Tavares play, though? More than that. Like, he's he won a round. And, like... The Islanders made the playoffs, eh? Yeah. I don't know. Lou doesn't like... Lou thought Tavares was terrible in the Island. Tyler Sagan has played seven games in the playoffs for the Dallas Stars. Oh, okay. Like, so th- so that that's that's a little part of it, right? Um, whereas in the, you know, what Sagan or Tavares has 24. Okay. So a bit, a bit more and like, I just, it's just weird how, I don't know. I, I think like not again, not saying that he's not as good at, like, I think he deserves to be in the conversation as one of the top players in the league. I just don't think he's talked about that way. And I don't think people think about him that way. Yeah. That, and yeah, I will. I agree that that he's not necessarily, but he he 100% should be. And and personally, I'll, I'll, going back to my point, I would rather him on his contract than Tavares on his. Yeah, that's um. So because like I don't think like his like his character issues were like massively overblown, and they're 
gone. And they're gone. Like, well, and maybe that's maybe not overblown. They, they're like, I don't know. They're I in heard, the past. They're in the past, and they're definitely like you haven't heard anything about it recently. So I think so. I'm, you think this is a little bit of a consolation prize? They didn't get Carlson, so they were like, okay, now we can sign him. I don't. I don't think that there's any doubt in my mind. Well, I know that there's no doubt in my mind. The the fact that like they signed him, and then what? Two hours later, Carlson was traded. Like that, one hundred percent is what happened. They they were in the running. They didn't out. think they could do both. Is what you're saying? I yeah. I think that they said if Eric Carlson comes here, we want to, to sign him long term. We want to have that opportunity. They didn't think that they could afford both. And yeah, once Carlson was gone, Sagan quickly signed a deal. They're wrong though. They totally could have afforded both. Yeah, they might not have wanted they to might, afford both. True, but like so, Spetz's seven and a half is gone. Yeah. And then Mark Mathot's five is gone. Yeah, you, I would easily trade one former senator for Mark Mathot. Yes, like it. It was definitely doable, and they've already and they've got five available. Like so, it's it would have been doable. It would have been, and like I don't think you'd be sad with Ben, um, Ben Sagan, and Carlson as your top three. Like that's a pretty killer top three correct yeah so um so yeah that's uh we've we got a couple rfa signed not the rfa that you wanted signed there's still five more waiting to be signed william nylander is one of them darnell nurse and josh morrissey both signing bridge deals and you don't see a ton of it you don't see a ton And, and essentially the exact same bridge deal Two years, 6.3 versus two years, 6.4 for a couple of defensemen. Um, both of them are FAs at the end of their deal. So still controllable, still going to sign another deal with these teams. Isn't that, isn't that the definition of a bridge deal? Yeah. I was just, okay. I was just clarifying. I was that. just making sure I was clarifying if I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Isn't that what a bridge deal is? Is there still RFAs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It does. So yeah, not a, bridge deals are not a thing. Um, that you see a lot of, and maybe we'll, maybe we'll see more with the, you know, the five left. Um, you feel like Winnipeg's mismanaging their team a little bit. I feel like they're mismanaging their team. Uh, I feel like they're the, the, the talk that like people don't want to play in Winnipeg. There's times when I'm like, yeah, people don't want to play in Winnipeg. I don't want to go to Winnipeg. Right. Like if I could go to Dallas, Texas not pay state tax and be warmer and not be in the murder capital of Canada. Right. I would rather that. This continually proves my Blake Wheeler point. (laughs) It's unnecessary. I, I think like, I think Truba's gone as soon as like the moment Truba gets the chance to leave, he's going to go like, you took you took one of your best defensemen to arbitration, which is a, typically a mistake. Like you, probably, like probably your best, like your youngest best defenseman. Like oh, like, for sure, yeah. Like I don't know, I I I can't imagine Bufflin is going to age well here. Like <laughs> yeah, he he is the future on the defense, right? One hundred percent. And so you don't want you don't want him to go like you. Tyler Myers is done, and like he, Tyler Myers has never lived up to what he once was. He's like he's okay now, but he's never been what like when he first broke in with Buffalo. He's never reached the excitement that people had for him. No, and so now so and now you're doing a bridge deal with Morris. Like I just like it's not terrible to do a bridge deal. Like lots of like. There is history of once you've done a bridge deal, guys signing long term afterwards. But like, you're not. I I I tend to think bridge deals tend to work out better for players. Yes. Yeah. So. So they're gonna like it's just it just feels like they could be doing this a little bit differently and getting better results, and yet I guess like. They're going to be a good team, so I guess it doesn't. I guess maybe it doesn't matter if you mismanage a bit. Yeah, if you have good players, you can you can still pull it off. Um, 
certainly I, the, the, I think the last bridge deal that signed long term, and I, I guess like I'll use that term loosely, like he signed long term, but PK Subban, he signed a bridge with Montreal, signed the long term deal. Obviously, uh, not a Montreal Canadian so. at this point. Yeah, and then I don't anything to say about Nurse. I like, guess just I'm not like if you had told me like last week which of the RFAs are most likely to sign a bridge, I probably would have said Nurse. Yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> Oilers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so very hilarious. very fair. Well, um, what else do we got on the dog? The let's talk. Let's talk collective bargaining agreement everyone's Whoa. most thrilling topic especially at this time you just like let's ramp up let's get ready for the hockey season you know how we should do that we should threaten strikes let's let's just throw uncle gary a bone he wouldn't let us go to the olympics last year let's let's get him back so the way that the way for if you haven't seen the the reason it came up is someone asked a question, but uh, and and the the PA made some statements. A lot of people started talking about it. Uh, at the end of this season, the league has a chance to opt out. Now the NHL, the owners have no desire at this point, right? They offered to extend the CBA in as a trade to go to the Olympics the last time, and the players were like, "No, we won't do that. We're not. We don't like this deal." So the owners can opt out. If they do not, the players can opt out and start this whole lockout shenanigans early Mm -hmm. or strike or whatever it ends up being. So you have, there's two years left. Yeah. And they can opt out after this season or after next season. It's after next season they can opt out. Yeah. It's the, it's whatever the year, all the guys that are making sure their signing bonuses hit July 1. And exactly that whatever it's two years so we have we have two years of peaceful hockey at least and then probably three years of a lockout yeah and then the fourth line podcast ceases to exist man two years we got two more years left in us joel well, let's make it count we're almost at 200 <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i i couldn't do a show through an entire lockout no nah. that would be impossible no I 100% assume the players open this up. For sure. Like, they're going to. It's not. So, and, like, it's brilliant because, like, because then Gary's going to be like, hey, guys, it wasn't me. I tried. We I tried. The players the players wouldn't let me. They, they went on strike, which is brilliant. Because, like, cause like they'll, be, they'll have been another work stoppage under his reign, but it won't be a lockout. So he'll still only have the ones that he has. Yeah. Um, and like, what's interesting is every time the CBA comes around for negotiating, you have different players being part of it, you know, a different star. And I was, I was very interested. Connor McDavid, uh, actually had things to say, which isn't something that you typically have with these stars. And he said, uh, you know, in, in regards to what both parties have kind of prepared for for so long, I genuinely believe that both sides want to keep playing. We want to play, and the owners want to keep making money. It sounds sounds reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Um, but certainly, like, you hear a lot, of, a lot of players talking about how they're not super happy about it. Um, escrow, a big part of what they, they want changed, and they want to go to the Olympics. Those are, like, the two sticking points that they're going to be negotiating on. And I feel like both solvable. Like, if that's the issue, those are things you can fix. Carl, I'm getting a little hopeful. I I know that they're going to go back to, like, to, like, rework this. But, like, I think there is a good chance that Gary Bettman still manages to lock it out. I'm not jinxing this and saying (laughs) otherwise. (laughs) <laughs> that, yeah okay yeah um i yeah i i've said this every time that i'm like i don't believe that they're stupid enough to lock out oh no they're going to but they've the, proven more and more that's exactly like it's a total batman mood to be like they're threatening to strike let's lock them out like that's, <laughs> like, that's a total batman move right there yeah like it's just it accomplishes exactly the same thing, but I I don't know. It's just 
sad. It's sad. I don't want to talk about it. All right. Well, let's move on. Um, I guess the, <laughs> uh, the other things on the docket are not much happier. Um, Austin Watson suspended 27 games for domestic violence charges. 27 games is, is a big number. And, and we talked, what, just last week about suspensions in leagues mm-hmm. and uh, on the heels of uh, the guy in Vegas. Schultz. Justin Schultz, not Justin Schultz. Nate, Nate Schmitz. Nate Schmitz. <laughs> Nate, Nate, Schultz. Nate, Nate, Nate Schultz. Schmitz. Nate Schmitz. Schmitz. <laughs> Stop it, Joel. <laughs> Nate Schmitz. <laughs> Nate Schmitz got 20 games um, in Vegas for his suspension. And we talked about the fact that, like, while it's big, like, the these leagues should, like, crack down on other things as well. Yeah. And so it was nice at least to see nice, as nice as it I was glad that he got more games, that Watson got more games than Schmidt did. Uh, still could be more. Still could be a little stronger. Yeah, I, I, it's, I don't want to spend a ton of time talking to a guy who pleaded no contest to domestic violence. I'm glad, I'm glad that it's not like four games because that's kind of what I expected. Like I expect them not to crack down on this stuff. So... Um, yeah, maybe don't be a terrible person. Like if you like, yeah, I, I don't know how, I don't have a whole lot to say other than good. Yeah. I'm glad he got suspended. I'm glad, I'm glad that they are, they at least show the league is showing some sort of, Hey, we don't, we want, we expect our players to live to a certain standard. And so, yeah. Um, the one thing that I would have, you know, would have thought, um, 100% agreed, but this, this happened, uh, he was charged back in July. So it took them almost two full months to come to some sort of suspension, which is fine. Games hadn't happened yet. Um, as part of his pleading, no contest, he had to complete 26 weeks of a intervention program for batterers as well as inpatient treatment for drugs and alcohol. I would have thought, because 26 weeks from July is not going to be when he comes back. That's uh, probably going to be a bit... I, I would have said go till that point in time. And uh, I'm not sure, um, you know, plus a little bit more. So, um, but yeah, that's that's Austin Watson not going to be playing and uh, not that sad about it either. Nope. Uh, Jake Dotchin no longer a member of the Tampa Bay Lightning because he came into camp a little bit out of shape. This is, I find this story extremely interesting. First of all, good. Glad he got his contract voided. I don't like him. Okay. Oh, right. He did a thing to one of you, didn't he? Multiple things to multiple of my favorite players. So if he never plays in the NHL again, won't be sad. Okay. See, this is this is the part of the show where if guys never play in the NHL again, no, we won't be sad. <laughs> right. That's that's this segment. Because Watson wouldn't be sad. Dotchin wouldn't be sad. Who did he do to what? Kapanen and Dermot, I believe. Mm. I don't know. There's two guys. Definitely Kapanen. I forget who the second guy was. Might have been Goche. He also got he, he got in, suspended for something at some point in time, too. He's a dirty player. Was it? I guess he's still a player, just not on a team. He is. He was a dirty NHLer. Now he's just a dirty player. Right, that's true. Um, yeah, the other one, which, again, had mixed feelings about because he, uh, he got s- suspended. Or he, he was in a, a tussle with Marchand. And he actually didn't get suspended. Marshawn got two games. Wow. Never Seriously? Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Um, Marshawn but anyways, yeah. So, so you find it, aside from the fact that you're not sad that he's no longer in the league. I find it interesting that, like, because, like, the PA is going to fight this. They're apparently going to fight it pretty difficult, like, pretty hard. Because the, like, because apparently, like, the wording in these contracts are just like you have to be in game shape. So it's just like so now there is a team that is challenging so like the PA is gonna challenge Tampa's um interpretation of game shape. Right. 
So, like, how how do you determine that? That becomes very difficult. It's like you, game shape is you have to do this many bench presses. You have to skate ten minutes without falling over. I like w- it's the most arbitrary. Like, I re- I re- actually I remember or not I remember I read uh, somewhere this week that I believe in the seventies for the Calgary Flames the physical test was twenty push ups, twenty sit ups, twenty. 50 of something else. I was like, that's, that's not a physical test for these guys. No, so I, I'm interested to see. I assume the PA will lose because it's not a guy. He's made, he was going to make like 700,000 or something like that. So it wasn't like you were, it wasn't like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a player that, like the team probably, it's not like, Kevin Bieksa last year showed up where like the Ducks would have been like perfectly happy for Kevin Bieksa to disappear. But like, hey, we can we can get rid of you without having to buy you out. Sign us up. Well, and and uh I think the last time that this happened where there was someone who was found in breach of contract was Mike Richards. Right, which was totally different. Which was totally different and in the end they reached a uh, an agreement for him to disappear and to not be with the LA Kings anymore. Um, in this situation, the, uh, you know, this is, this is something, you know, he's, he's had issues on the ice, off the ice. So, um, certainly no surprise that Tampa wanted out from him. It is surprising that they took such a strong stance on someone, like you said, only 700,000. Because they could have buried him in the AHL with no cap limit. So they don't want to pay him. That's literally what they... They don't even want him around. They don't want him around. They don't want to pay him. Because other than that... Because, like, you could have... like it, Yeah, because I think it's, like, up to 950 you can bury, right? So, like, yeah. something like that. So, like, he was under that limit. So they could have put him on waivers if he cleared, which he would have. Because, come on. And they could have buried him in the minors. Never played him. But they were just like, we don't, not only do we not want you around, we don't want to pay you. You're not in game shape. Goodbye. Yeah. And it, I, I don't suspect that this sets a precedent, but like, but it could, right? Like if, if one team's allowed to do this and the PA can't win that fight, then what's to stop another team from saying, you know what, this guy, we don't want this deal. You know, a, a bigger money guy. Um, I think that could be could be an issue there. Um but, you know, I would suspect at that point then that becomes one of those things that uh is in the CBA negotiations that we we have coming up apparently. I don't know how you would I just don't know how you define that cuz like yeah, you do have to like pass some sort of physical at least and like I guess that's more injury related, but I don't know. It's a, it'll be interesting to see, like, because it also sets precedent if the PA wins this. Like, if they fight it and win, then that also set like that sets a different precedent. Like, but that that doesn't change the landscape as it is right now. Like, the this isn't something that you have, right? Like, if if there's a team that's up against, if it if it's a non injury reason, because if it's an injury thing, then you're like, okay, we just put them on long term IR, whatever. Uh, if if it's just someone that's regressed to the point that that's not the case, then I think we'll have to see some sort of standardized testing that needs to be put in place. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought it was like, it is interesting. It's just an interesting little thing that like, I've never, like you don't guys contracts don't get voided very often. No, most certainly not. Um, the NHL, there's some games in China happening right now. And, uh, again, Going back to the CBA Olympics, the NHL clearly with putting games in China with the Olympics there, um, big, big desire for them to be able to have that, um, that whole scenario there. So, um, that'll be interesting to see where, you know, after not being there, uh, for, you know, some of these other situations, they, you know, clearly want to have a presence in China. Yeah, so that's the interesting thing with the next Olympics then. Is like so like they're trying to have this push to have a presence in China 
And then, like, so wouldn't it make sense that, like, they would want their players in the Olympics then? Yeah. Yeah. If if you're going to take... And Grant, it's what? It's two teams in the preseason. You're really losing nothing. I know, like, for the Flames, they've had to have a lot of uh, finagling. It's a lot of effort on their part. But the NHL and presumably those teams benefit from it. Um, but when you have the 2022 games happening in China you would think that would be a, a perk. You would think so. Yeah. If you look at that, there's preseason games going on right now. Yeah, I think your leaves start tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, preseason hockey is almost upon us. Hey, do you want to... Uh, the people want to know things. And some of the things that the people want to know is high-sticking. Ooh. Yeah. We haven't mentioned on the show what it is, right? Last week, we, we teased... Yeah, we've changed it. We we teased the fact that it's changed. We teased the new prizes that we have. We didn't even tease. We said what they were. Yeah. Co- coasters to go along with pucks and mini sticks. Um, this year, high sticking a tweak to it. And it's, you know, until further notice, this is how it's going to, how it'll be. Uh, so, we're going to be picking our Pavel Bray must-watch games of the week. I think that goes without saying. Yeah. Because it, it's good to know what's on what's on the schedule, mm-hmm. what you should be looking forward to. For each of those, you are going to predict who you think will win that game and the score of that game. Um, so, if you go to our Twitter, at 4th Line Podcast, and let us know for each of those games, we'll tweet it out. Say, hey, what's the score? What's it going to be? Now, for points, Joel, mm-hmm. you're going to get points if you're right. You get points. If you get, you just pick a straight up winner, you get a point. You get a, a point if you pick the winner. You get a point if you pick the score of the winning team. Mm, sort of. I don't remember. If you that. get the winner correct, then you're eligible for the bonus points. Right. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to get the winner right. We don't give points to people who pick losers. Yeah. If you pick the loser, you get a z- zero points. But if you pick the winner, you get one point for each team score that you p- picked correctly. So let's say the game is Leafs Avalanche, and I say the Avalanche are going to win six to four. Carl gets zero points because they lost three to one. Or when the Avalanche wins seven to four, I get a point for picking the winner right, and I get a point for picking the Leafs four goals. But the Avalanche outperformed what I thought they would do and scored seven, so I don't get a point for that one. It's never going to happen. And so that is how high stickings work. You get those points. We put those points in a hat. Each point is a name in a hat. We draw a name on the show every two weeks or every month. That that's that's the random part of it. We kind of uh, depending on how the schedule is. Depending on how the schedule is. Depending on you know if it if it's a runaway. If one person has a lot of points. So that I guess that that's one thing with the the new format of drawing versus just a race to first. That's not as much of an issue anymore. It's true. Anybody can win anytime. You just got to play once. Yeah. Um, I do think, you know, the start of the season, we'll probably do a, a short one, maybe maybe two weeks to start the season. Again, depending on how it works out. Um, and then we will uh, we'll send it out. And then you let us know what which of the prizes you want. And we'll, uh, we'll send that off to you. So high sticking. That's how that's going to work this year. Um, anything else you wanted to touch on before we wrap it up? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, there's, uh, we got got season previews coming up. We talked a little like Stanley cup favorites, but we'll like do like conference or divisions or something. We only got like two weeks left, I think. Yeah. We were supposed to do it this week and next week and then all the news happened this week yeah but i don't i don't suspect anyone's getting traded this week certainly no one of eric carlson's levels getting traded i would suspect no general managers are going to resign unless it's pierre dorian and then we'll just have a good laugh yeah and uh carry on um i would suspect some rfas would probably sign this week there's five left i believe five left so you know maybe two two could join that um and yeah so we'll next week we will do everything in our power to make that happen um unless unless the news goes crazy then then we'll see what happens um 
before we wrap up the show, want to remind everyone, the Alberta Podcast Network is your place for all things podcast. Two very important pieces of news with the Alberta Podcast Network, Joel. Two of them. Um, two of the podcasts on the network are nominated for awards. Whoa. The Canadian Online Publishing Awards Best Consumer Podcast. Let's find out and well endowed. So congrats to them. And congratulations as well to the newest hockey podcast on the Alberta Podcast Network. It's a little podcast that you may know called the Fourth Line WHL Cast. Ooh. Yeah, so that's we are officially on the network now, starting up our second season. We had our first half of our season preview came out last week on Wednesday. So if you want to learn about the Western Conference of the WHL, tune to that. Wednesday this week, we'll be looking at the Eastern Conference, getting you started, because the, the season starts Friday for them. Regular season starts Friday for the WHL. So if you're a fan of junior hockey in Western Canada and the Pacific Northwest, we got you covered. Where do you find that? Uh, you can find it on the iTunes. You can find it on the fourthlinepodcast.com. If you head over there, you will find that. And uh, if you go to the fourthlinepodcast.com slash WHLcast, We'll have those links there for you. Beauty. So, and uh, until next week, again, you can head to our Twitter. If you're a Detroit Red Wings fan, you want to let us know how wrong we are about Henrik Zetterberg, uh, don't go to our Twitter at Fourth Line Podcast, or do. You can find us there. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Uh, you can let us know how wrong we are at Fourth Line Podcast, facebook.com slash the Fourth Line Podcast. If you need to email us, if Twitter, if the 280 characters is not enough for you, Mail at the fourthlinepodcast.com is the place for you to go. And uh, obviously, the fourthlinepodcast.com. We're doing our division previews. We've got two in the bag Pacific, Central, Metro's coming out this week with the fun caveat that each preview is the amount of words as the team had points the previous season. Mm. It's a fun little thing. Shout out to Nate and Ken. They helped us with the last one, looking at the Hawks and the Wild. Uh, in the opposite order if I said their name. So that's a fun little thing. Um, we've got some guests coming up this week, Joel. Um, so looking forward to, you know, having that. If you, if you want to take part in any of those, let us know, send us a DM, send us an email, and we would love to have you as part of our previews going forward or just writing on the website. If you want to be part of a great crew of writers, we have a lot of fun over there. So until next week, boom city. <laughs>